uh, I'm excited about being here because uh, Winsong, you guys are like my heroes in judo. It's uh, very intimidating to have to come and uh, and preach here because I'm like preaching to my heroes. But uh, Nick asked me some time back to talk about uh, Juno Kata uh, because it's uh, fairly seldom done in the United States and uh, probably around the world. You might find uh, a little bit more of it elsewhere, but uh, it is fairly uh, rarely done. I've been uh, playing with Juno Kata for probably uh, 20 years, but for much of that time it's been sort of on the back burner. And so uh, I don't know that I have any amazing insights, but I have some, uh, I have thought about it a bit, and I have some, uh, some pointers. <coughs> Sometime around, uh, when was Kodakon founded? 1882? Mm -hmm. uh, it took two or three years for him to get rolling, and pretty soon he had a, uh, a judo machine going in the Kodakon. And, uh, started drawing students, and if you look in the beginning of uh, Fakota Sensei's book or in uh, Judo Memoirs, uh, it talks about how there came a point to where there was more students than there were instructors. So he had a dilemma. You couldn't just throw every uh, beginner with a black belt and let them absorb that way. So he had to come up with some way of getting some practical Randori knowledge to relative beginners. And what he came up with was Juno Kata. And when I read that, I screeched to a halt and read that three or four times because he's talking about practical Randori knowledge for beginners. And uh, over here, Juno Kata is a, uh, it's an expert thing for, uh, for aging uh, superheroes, right? <laughs> but uh, Kano intended this thing to be uh, for beginners and to convey some practical knowledge. Now when we look at this thing on videos, uh, we're tempted to think, hmm, that's interesting, but where's the practical Rondori thing? And uh, I've, I've been thinking about that uh, sort of contradiction for a while. And it makes me think, here is the, one of the smartest dudes in the world of his time, one of the greatest educators, and he says this is his preferred method to teach a group of people a standard set of practical Rondori things. And uh, here we are a hundred and something years later, and we look at it and we can't see anything practical or Rondori-ish about it. To me, that, that says there's something wrong with our conception of um, what Rondori, what we think Rondori is. Um, and that's probably enough grandstanding and, and preaching. <laughs> Let's just uh, go to this thing. How about it? Who's going to be my victim? Damon? Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first move is. Uh, the, this kata is divided in three sets of five techniques. The first technique is called sukidashi. Uh, in the books, they say it means stabbing the guy with your hand. But uh, so far as I can tell, it actually means, the name means something like uh, how to avoid a clash or a smash or something like that. All right, so we're standing about so far apart. Okay takes three sugiyashi steps in to place a uh, a hand blade in your head. This is a my game. You should uh, you should have a uh, acute enough sense of my that your second step places you right on the edge where he can't grab you and, and bust you and your third step places you inside his head. Okay? So three sugiyashi to put that in my head. Okay. I duck out of the way over here, put my hand between my face and his, and uh, find his arm. Okay. 
and we get in a situation like this. He's going to uh, fix here after I screw his balance up. And uh, the, all of these exercises to me seem like uh, like bullet note, bullet points or uh, or cliff notes. They're like lecture notes, right? So each kata that we go through gives you a list of things to preach about, all right? So the my game is the first one. He wants his second step to put him at the edge and third step to put it in my head. If you read the books, they say grab his arm and pull him this way to get him off balance, all right? We got us a, a Aikido monster here, though. Tell me what this makes you feel like doing. Oh, no. He knows how to do releases. <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. All right, so grabbing this guy and pulling on him is probably not the thing to do. All right, let's look at another way we can get off balance. All right, I dumped him in the hole as I turned out of the way. This doesn't have to be uh, obvious or dramatic, but uh, Watch his uh, left hand as we do this thing again. All right, do your release. Oh, jerk. Okay. Yeah, that arm okay. slips away from me as I as he steps in and uh, and I grab him. That arm that I wanted to grab slips away from me. All right. So we go again. Here, he has a little bit more trouble slipping that arm away from me if I push his arm in the hole. All right, so uh, let's just take this thing in pieces and find you a partner and do it as a my game. All right? He's trying to get to the edge by step two. I'm trying to slip out of the way and push his elbow just a little bit so that he bobbles and then slip in, catch under his hand, and over his hand and stand directly behind him. All right, find your partner and play that. Under and grabs his yeah, like, yeah. wrist yeah. from yeah. underneath. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so I want to. So you have an over grip and an under grip. Yeah. Here. <laughs> and under. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have him splayed out like he's on a cross. Oh. I just go ahead and let that right hand slide on down to get the wrist grip. And so the right. you want to push him and twist him. Right. It doesn't really make any sense to uh, to try to catch this thing right there. So I'm putting my hand between my face and yours. Yeah, you get more rotation. You're getting up here. Yeah. So much more action. No, that's right. You want to slip to the wrist before you get on the back here? I get both of those at roughly the same time. Okay, so when you get that pull, it makes them feel like doing that release, right? Right. But when you step in here, and you get that sort of action, you don't uh, as much feel like a release. Yeah, uh, that's what we were trying to pull. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, they ever, they ever do this left and right, or are they just always do right? It's always one side, always one side. The, uh, the offsides of these cutters are sort of left as uh, individual exercises. You can do them if you want to, but uh, that's not part of the standard thing. Let's go real slow. All right, yeah, mate. We're fun. Well, we're going to keep having fun. There you go. Here's you a chance to uh, to think about what off balance is and and how you get off balance and that sort of thing. Uh, in, in this exercise, and, and I think it generalizes pretty well, broken balance equals broken 
rhythm or timing. If you look at the uh, the old guys on YouTube in black and white, if I'm going to be okay, and you uh, slip out of the way and do my arm, okay, something like so would have been uh, something you'd see in a more modern uh, video when you slip out of the way and bump my arm. There's a there's a disturbance in your rhythm. Okay, so uh, the fact that I can't just smoothly uh, carry on with what I'm doing is an indicator that something happened to disrupt my uh, balance or my intention or my <coughs> groove or whatever. All right, so uh, you ought to destroy the guy's uh, balance like so. He comes in here. And you break him. I, I missed that, so I just hooked. But you would like to get that grip. You break him over your chest. Uh, what is a uh, uh, your most common response to somebody in Aikido grabbing behind you? Right? What's the first thing? Yeah, look at that. All right, so he does release five. Yeah. <clears throat> We just happen to be here. All right, I break in. The, what is interesting about this is it's done from a sort of a broken, bent posture. He extends this a little bit to get our weight on the, that foot and then backs this foot between us. As he does, he webs this hand right there and he pulls me and breaks me over his chest. All right, I repeat the same business. I extend here a little bit. And we get here. I break him, switch to straight up and down, and back off. And then put your toys back. All right, so uh, after the my game where he approaches and you slip out of his way and get the off balance, uh, it's release five, and then I do release five, and I end up winning. Right there. All right. Play that with you, buddies. Do it one more time, long one. Sure. Thank you. Let's that way a little more. This arm down. There you go. So you get some practice in my, you get some practice evading and getting off balance. You get some practice responding with release five. And then you get some practice changing that control at the end so that you win and this thing doesn't continue all the way across the floor. Uh, this one, the lead arm is up. He extends this and then turns back. So I come across you, this one with the one that's down. You extend here to put his weight on this foot, and then this foot steps backward through. That's a rotation. <laughs> You wind up with the controlling grip. You extend here and turn backward through that. From there, 
Yeah, well, that can continue forever, and forever and until it. Right. And you uh, you switch to elbow and shoulder and back off. Elbow and shoulder. Thanks, everybody. Good, good. That was good. Yeah, how if you just immediately take that down? Yeah. Uh, both times you break him over your chest, so, so we're here. <laughs> and we get this. This is an underhook here with your thumb, and I break him over my chest. All three times. He extends here and turns. And he breaks me over his chest. And I extend and turn. Break him. Or something. It's hard to come up with absolute uh, what this is applications. Uh, I like to think of them as sort of abstract or general purpose things like walking cutter. You can't say the one thing that that is in walking cutter. These are reusable chunks of judo type motion. Good. Left arm up. There you go. Mm -hmm. He extends and uh, extend here and turn back with this one. There you go. Up and down. And then switch to shoulder and elbow and back off. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's an experiment it is. that you're running over and over and over. That's a heck of a spine ball. That's right. There's a, an extension here into that. Boy, it really comes like a <laughs> second release when, you know, when you do it really good. Boy, it's it's like you got back. Yeah, but <laughs> most of these things are real, uh, they're gentle in the sense that you're not smashing the guy, but they're very vigorous right. exercise. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, Yale. One more uh, point, I'll let you uh, play it another time or two. <laughs> hey, my uh, my brain is getting all uh, non-pliable in my old age, and I forgot what I was going to say. Let's uh, do it a time or two, and I will remember. Okay, I figured it out. All right, uh, if we come back to here, all right, yeah, we're here. If he wants to uh, turn around and he doesn't affect my balance, turn around and grab my arms and try to do your little twisty thing. All right, we're in a fight, all right? In order to not only facilitate this escape, but allow him to take control, he's got to break my balance by extending here. He places my weight on this foot, which creates a uh, sort of a doorway for him to pull that foot through. All right. All right. If I turn around and leave him however he likes it, he's not going to work with me. All right. So if this is going to be Jew, then you've got to break the guy's uh, balance. 
create that pivot so that he can uh, he can turn. Uh, another little interesting tidbit here. He, uh, let's get right here. If I were going to grab this arm and control it, like hold him here, no matter what, uh, this would be a sorry grip to do it. I'd probably want to grab this guy like this, but I'm here. I've got a sorry grip. But let's just continue the thing. Go ahead and extend here and turn. And he gets his thing. And I extend here and turn. Oh, look, my grip has turned into a good grip. All right. This is a recurring theme. You will see uh, plenty of places in these exercises where one or the other of us or both takes some screwed up grip that nobody with any sense would grab somebody or push somebody that way. But when you follow the motion, it becomes something cool. Or you will see uh, repeated in this exercise where I take a good solid grip and as you follow the motion of the thing, my grip is destroyed. It's turned into something terrible. Okay. So uh, play two or three more reps. Look at how the uh, goofy grip in the beginning becomes, after two repetitions, a good grip. All right? And make sure that uh, when you're doing that release five from here, that you're uh, breaking his balance to one side so that you are able to turn it. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Go ahead. So he was breaking your balance by taking a step. Um, and you were just removing your center. Is there a right or wrong? Uh, these things are, I'm, I'm sure there is a one right way to do this thing. But uh, so far as uh, my interpretation and my enjoyment of playing with this exercise, it is a, an experiment in uh, judo-related physics that you just run over and over and over and over and over to see how it turns out. And uh, since it's a kata, it should turn out. Oh, so there's this actually, the pull actually, and that will step through. If, you, uh, okay. if we get here and you do your turn, you're right. Uh, yeah. You do your turn and leave me alone. <laughs> right. Uh, but so we're it's, okay, it's okay to, to Let's see. But yeah. extend yeah. here before you turn. Yeah. Yeah. Take a little step pushing here. Now I'm on one foot. Okay. Sorry, guys. We were going the wrong direction. Okay. Thank you. And it works just like uh, release five. Kind of come out. Release five, we're used to seeing it from here. Right. Now we're just looking at it from here. Okay. And you would like to, uh, as you make the turn, use the web of your hand to grab my wrist and pull this through. Mm -hmm. so no, I got you. <laughs> All right, so push here. There you go. Web here and pull through. Good. It starts with uh, you taking three sugiyashi to stab me in the head. I'm breaking you. Release. I'd like to. Oh, I got to grab. <laughs> there you go. Now I do the same thing. And I win. There's a lot of these where uh, I do my thing, you do your thing, and then I do. It's like uh, we're both repeating the same stuff. If you don't, then you're uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. A, a real generic strike. It is. No. 
No, probably not. Hang out with Lenny after that for everybody. <laughs> All right, yeah, man. This exercise is real sneaky, and uh, it's easy to see how uh, somebody might get off on a tangent or off on a wrong track and and uh, just run this thing to death in the wrong direction. Sorry. Uh, I think that this is a bunch of uh, sort of generic, sort of general purpose reusable chunks of judo-like motion that, uh, that you will reuse elsewhere in judo. Sort of like the uh, walking in Aikido. Now it's hard to, uh, to point your finger at, at this thing in walking and say, here's the one thing that is, <laughs> right? Here's the one correct application for that. Right. So uh, this could be a million different things, or this could be a bunch of different things, or this could be a bunch of different things in walking. Same way, um, these are, uh, I think they are purposely abstract enough to be general, general purpose. Uh, it's easy to... Uh, Kano could have, I think, taken this thing apart and put it back together to where it was like walking, where you have one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these. And uh, there's no <clears throat> simulation of, of an attack, defense sort of thing. But Kano left all these uh, reusable pieces inside the context, so there's something that indicates an attack or a... Uh, a plane where the thing is happening, but it's uh, it's vague enough that you could make a lot of stuff out of it. Okay, so uh, I think you get into a trap when you start trying to say, "Here's the one thing that the guy is simulating with this attack," or "Here's the one thing that this motion could be used for." So. Uh, and I'm not the expert, so go along with me for a while, <laughs> and uh, we'll work on this thing and see if y'all can come up with a better reason that all the attacks are, are sort of weird and, and vague in general. All right. The next thing. All right. So uh, we've turned and turned, and and I wind up directly behind him, and I break him, and I get back here, and I put all my toys back where they were, and I take a hike around this guy such that uh, he's standing right at the back corner of me. Okay, Let's uh, reorient this thing here. Alright, so bad guy comes right up behind my corner, makes a large motion, places his hand at the top of my spine there, right there, and pushes my face in the dirt. <laughs> right. Alright, so uh, we're going to uh, respond to this attack by yielding. Let me show you something interesting here. If, uh, <clears throat> if he puts some force on me and we fight for a second, and I yield like that, that's yielding, but I've lost him, right? We fight for a second. I can't control him because I don't have hold of him. But watch this. This is kind of neat. We fight for a second, and I yield and I can sort of steer this thing so long as I give him some feedback. <laughs> so long as so long as he's got some feedback, he will uh, continue pushing on this thing even when it goes bad for him, right? So I'm I'm giving way to you. <laughs> All right. So there's lots of crazy stuff you could do to the guy yielding on him. We're just doing that here. All right, he pushes on me, so I don't want to to give way like this. I would like to allow him to think he's the boss here. <coughs> he's winning this thing. Oh, he's got me. And pretty soon, he's pushing me sort of upside down and backwards. Imagine for a second a uh, very heavy uh, ball sphere on a frictionless surface and you walk up to push the thing 
and uh, supposing you could push on a frictionless surface, but uh, <laughs> you've got ninja slippers on or something. <laughs> and you push on this thing, it doesn't just slide around the room. It starts this bit based on how you're pushing it. It's yielding, but because it's heavy, it's sort of, it's got some inertia. So it's yielding, but as I try to follow this thing that I'm pushing, and it keeps slipping and turning, pretty soon I'm upside down and backwards trying to push on the thing. Okay? So that guy comes right up behind you, pushes on the top of your spine, and he yields slowly enough that it makes me think that I'm still pushing his face in the dirt. As he turns out, he picks his thumb up and slips it into the palm of my hand and continues that. And he slips back there and then he stands up. And he's got me hung on one leg. All right? So uh, play that sort of um, large sphere yielding, but giving him some feedback game. Thank you.